now started. Welcome, Dr. Oni. Hey. I'm happy to see you here, and I'm glad you could uh, make this interview. Thank you. It's a privilege. <laughs> I don't know, like just for the introduction for people who may not know you, you are an Ayurvedic doctor from South India. Yeah, and I've been practicing as an Ayurvedic doctor yes. for the last uh, 23 years, a little more than that, yeah. So I have my degree from the university and then I've been practicing after that. Okay. Yes. So for just like uh, for the people who may not know, if there are a few in the world who don't know what is Ayurveda, could you just put a few words to that? Yeah, Ayurveda is the traditional medicine of India. Mm -hmm. So we consider it as uh, more than 3,000 years old. And of course, the base of the medicine is so strong that it will last forever. You know, it has a solid base. And with the principles of Ayurveda, it is like so complete that you can use it for millions of years in the future. That's the base of Ayurveda. That's a, it's about knowing the universe and then knowing yourself. And yes. also teaching you that you are all part of this, the whole universe. Yeah. So, and it teaches you to learn with the forces around you. Mm -hmm. Not to exploit it, but live with it. To be in the surroundings. So. Yeah, exactly. Really nice. And uh, for, here in Denmark, you are quite famous because, first of all, you've been here many times. And second of all, if I'm not uh, mistaken, there's like many Danish uh, famous actors and so on who took treatments from you. Well, um, I've been lucky enough to travel around Europe because people came to our place and then they were quite happy with the results and the, uh, they got from this science. And of course, it's an alternative way and uh, they should have been happy. So of course, they introduced me to the West and also I have some beautiful stories about that. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So and in my uh, travels, then of course, may I met quite a few people and they were happy enough to come here and probably they got good results so that should be the reason why more and more people came here yes so and um, just for by way of introduction to the readers you and i also go mm, way back and uh, you know i'm doing chinese martial arts a lot and travel in india also a lot and way back, you used to come sometime to my martial arts center and do your treatments yeah. there. Yes. That's how we started to talk. And I remember <laughs> one day, because I, I did martial arts for like 40 years and you get some damages in your body and you were treating in my, in my center, but I was mm -hmm. not aware of what kind of treatment you were doing. One day yeah. I, was, I was doing some uh, Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu wrestling. I came out from the training and you also came out from the treatment room at that point and asked me, do you want the treatment? Because somebody didn't show up, I have a free time. I said, okay, let me try. And you, you proceeded to give me the treatment. And uh, you may know or not know, but I had a knee injury in that time. And after one treatment, and, 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 and along with the story goes, I'd seen physiotherapist, I got radiotherapy, I got the short wave therapy, I got the massage, I got all kinds of injections, I got every kind, but they couldn't treat it. But after one treatment with you, it was gone. So I was very impressed. And then I started talking to you about that. And you explained something to me, which is also the reason I'm very interested in talking to you today. And that is, maybe Ayurveda is quite famous amongst the people who have the interest, but the way you do Ayurveda is informed by uh, calorie period, like the South Indian martial arts and mm -hmm. you can say that one of you the specialities of your particular uh, way of Ayurveda is that it is informed by let's say the the wisdom of the warriors you know mm -hmm. of South India and mm -hmm. just also by way of introduction then I'll let you explain how all of that happened is that the history of martial arts they have a legend Maybe some historians don't agree with the legend, but the legend is there was a South Indian prince who knew, probably knew Kalari. 
He traveled mm. to China and he yeah. was a Buddhist and introduced uh, uh, Chan. He was the first patriot in China in the Shaolin Temple and mm. introduced uh, the martial arts there. And mm. when I was in Kilara uh, in 2006 with my teacher, like, you remember, I brought the Maharaji, my, my teacher, there to you. <laughs> so we stayed about one month in Kerala, and I got treatments and all of that. But you also introduced me to what, some of the masters of, of uh, Kalari at that time. So the legend goes that Bodhidharma is the founder of Chan Buddhism and founder of Shaolin Kung Fu. And he traveled from India to China. For this reason, I find it very interesting to hear from you uh, then the wisdom of the war is how you found out it, what kind of knowledge about the body and, and the healing of the body that the, the war tradition had. So if, I don't know you, if you mind uh, telling the story of how all of that happened, that you, know, that you came to merge those two. You know, like my education as an Ayurvedic doctor, of course, we didn't have the education for the martial art techniques in our curriculum. So, of course, after my uh, education, I started my training and practice. And it was during my practice that uh, I started to discover about the uh, techniques from the martial arts because I had some masters who were employed in my clinic who used to practice this. So actually, this is one of the stories that even made me come to Denmark. Because uh, what happened was one of the uh, clients or one of the patients suddenly got hit by a wave and she had a whiplash injury. And immediately the person came with, uh, with, the, injury, with the injury on the neck. She had a MRI scan. So I took her to the uh, scanning center. The scan was done. And of course, there was a prolapse and uh, we could see in the cervical region. And there was tremendous pain because she couldn't turn her neck. It was pressing on the nerve and it was just shooting pain continuously. No positions was giving any sort of result. Immediately to the, she was referred to the best hospital. I had just started my practice. So it was important to give the best possible care. So the insurance was referred, the best hospital in, in Trivandrum looked into it, the best orthopedician. They saw and they said, yes, rest. You have to stay still and rest. That was but the person couldn't even sleep because the pain is just shooting. When you have a nerve pain, it is so intense. And uh, so one day, two days, the person said, I just, I can't do anything. This is horrible. No, uh, I have to rest like this. Can you do something? But the interesting thing was there was this martial art therapist in my clinic who just saw everything saw the person going to the best hospitals and the most experienced person and said, doctor, I can treat this so easily. Why do you just keep on taking this person? And uh, But you say, you know, it is a neck injury. The, uh, the wisdom in modern sciences, if you do something there, you might get paralyzed. You know, this is, the, this is how the doctors are trained. So you have to be very careful. And uh, so we can't deal with that, but come on. Uh, the person is in pain and you can't uh, make this person suffer like this and I'm ready to do it. So after three, four days, I spoke to the, uh, the patient and she said, I'm just ready to do anything because I can't go like this on a plane or, you know, this is too much. I'm not sleeping at night. I'm just sitting all the time and I can't move with this pain. Of course, I can walk, but the pain is horrible. The, and walking around with a cervical collar. So then we spoke. The direction the uh, patient gave was, okay, if something happens and I get paralyzed, you just shoot me uh, and kill me because I don't want to be paralyzed. You know, as a doctor, I had to take the decision. And I felt pretty confident, like with, uh, with my master, because I had uh, heard lots of stories and I've also seen many of his I've seen similar patients getting better. So that is why I was confident. And I told him and he said, yes, I will do it. So we took, took the uh, lady inside and uh, did some short manipulations, did the whole uh, massage treatment. And then there was a 
an intense manipulation where there was a loud crack mm -hmm. the lady screamed like anything and she said no i'm fine you know i don't have the shooting pain i can turn my neck i just have a small spot of course there will be a place where the injury was there was a just a small spot i feel there but i'm fine wow. you know so much intense pain the person cannot even sleep and that all disappears in this 45 minutes of a massage and training then that is an expert view i have in front of me i realized yes. and that is when i really started to learn about this i really wanted to learn because it opened my eyes yes. there is much more than uh, what we learn from the colleges yes and i really wanted to do learn and also introduce this to the people so from there the journey started and the wonderful thing was when i came to europe it was this family who introduced them who actually got them uh, got me to stay in their house and i was even giving short trip uh, treatments to people who came there and that's how it got a little popular in denmark as well why <laughs> because people were quite interested in 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 this way of treatment because they obviously got better with that yeah i felt the effect that's an amazing story and just to think that modern doctors were unable to treat it and even you had a traditional tenant unable to treat it but this uh, unknown brands they had the it was easy for them to do they had the experience mm -hmm. wonderful so what when you after that do you went to learn from the gallery masters about this or yeah this was an eye opener it was like wow so i started to visit and of course this was a time when uh, in do this is like almost more than 20 20 years back mm -hmm. yeah what was happening was the calories were getting less relevant in our system because there was a time when going to the calorie was to train there was the basis for each for all the children okay. and then of course when you get desperate when the money is not there then the next thing we before india everyone wanted to become an engineer or a doctor you know yes so suddenly you lose all these traditional knowledges so this wasn't relevant so what we were losing the knowledge going to the and of course uh, there was there were sending movies about kung fu karate and the children started to go there so the calories started to shrink okay so we were starting to lose the knowledge so it was also so i started i got i was starting to search for the for the different teachers and different practitioners who were doing calorie and suddenly i discovered a lot yeah because when you search you start to discover then i realized that the knowledge also these different people had differed because this was something always the guru or the teacher had yes. and he would always choose because it was such a organized system they would make that uh, the people train with them the disciples had to train and also the best ones were chosen to give and they only them were given the best knowledge yes yeah, so the same the same in china yeah the, so they had to be it was like an organized system of life itself you know when you have when i was looking at it when children went there you know if there was children who are adhd or hyper children they could just put all their strength there you know yes. and and they gradually they were brought into the discipline they were brought into the balance that is a wonderful thing about the calorie because it is such an organized system yes and it is always being dedicated and and uh, you have to be in discipline and follow the master because the master was giving you the knowledge according to how you were advancing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this is what i i saw there and yeah. each and every master had his, his own way and knowledge about training and at the same time the healing yes you no know, because injury was common for them injury was common during this practices and it was important to get back to the training and they had so they they knew they knew that alignment was so important for the training yes so if you didn't have the proper alignment you have your weak weak side you have your weak spot and this is so important in martial arts so it was important never to expose your weak spot 
Mm-hmm. You know, in competitions, everything, you have to be so balanced. And only if you can be balanced in your body, you can get balanced in the mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were so connected. And this was what the gurus were, the teachers were directing you into. Mm-hmm. And if you had any imbalances, they always had like once a month, all the disciples, they would usually have the, tra- have the culinary treatments. And if you had the weak sides, if you had the injuries, they had to be treated. Corrected, yeah. yeah. And you balance it so you don't expose it to your opponents. Opponent, yeah. I think yeah. you told me back then that even once a year, they take one month off to treat everything. Yeah. They remove yeah. all injuries from one year so they don't accumulate yeah. injuries. Yeah. Mm. And here it was a must. And even from the you, when you started to train, they would usually say, okay, this one month you are taking the herbs. So all the flexibility, everything goes to the best possible. So flexibility plus strength. It was not just about being flexible. It was always about the flexibility and then recover. Then you make the joints or make the body stable with the strength. That mm. was the nature of the practice. Wonderful. And uh, yeah, and really get the energy from within. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How you concentrate your energy. Mm-hmm. And of course, I was lucky to meet a few people, get some of the healing. I just have learned a few parts because the knowledge they had was quite immense. So yeah, and that also I I could see like each and every calorie had their own secret. Yes. So you yeah. what you're saying, you're scratching the surface of their knowledge. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. they had their uh, oils, which they were very proud of for, for applying for the healing. They had their powders, they had their herbs were taking inside. So yeah. everything, they had their organized system. So I got to meet a, a few of them because we have the northern part had a different way of, tree, of uh, training and the southern had a different way. Oh. And all of them also had different ways of treatment as well. <laughs> yes. and they, like in your treatment, you're also using medicated oil and internal medicine. Is some of them came from calorie or you took them from Ayurveda? Well, in Ayurveda itself, like, uh, you know, for this prolapses, we have specific medicines. Yes. Which, you know, Ayurveda is always a softer way of, of approach. You know, you work with the body in a softer way. The mm-hmm. calorie way works a little more tough. Yes, you know, the, they are warriors. Yeah, yeah. The yogic way also was also like a softer, okay. but calorie so. So the way was for children, you know, who were very who had a lot of strength. You yes. couldn't get them into the yoga practice. Right? You would you would send them to the calories so they could really have the movements in the body, in the whole body, in a balanced way. That was the way they used to train. So if you should compare the yogic and Ayurvedic systems with the warrior system, what would you say is the difference of emphasis? Yeah, the, the yogic and Ayurvedic systems was more softer approach. Okay, yeah. yeah. And in the calorie, it was like straight now, okay, there is a problem, we have to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Because you cannot train with a weak body. Mm-hmm. You cannot train because you would be very exposed. So you have to heal it first. Yes. And the masters saw it immediately. And they would also, when the children came to train, they would say, okay, these are his weaknesses. We have to get him stronger there. This is a strong arm. This is a weak arm. This is, you know, every part. They, they were looking into it. And mm-hmm. that, was, that was the basis of the training and also the treatment. Mm-hmm. And of course, if you have a problem with your joints, if you have a problem with your spine, your spine always, the basic thing in Ayurveda, uh, yoga, also in calorie, the whole spine, you know, yes. the brain and the spine, this is the main energy. Yes. And once the energy is following the best there, then the rest, these are the branches, you have arms, you're like, this is the branches, your yes. energy is in the whole spine and the brain, Yes. you know? And one, this has really activated it. Then the rest just moves with it. Yes. So the whole treatment is is allowing, channeling this energy to flow and get it really strong. This was the 
basis of the traditional sciences. Wonderful. And, uh, and there's also a particular emphasis on like the stomach or like the Manipura chakra, no? Always, if you ever had a treatment with me, like also in the yogic postures, you could see the center was always here. Yes. Yeah. And whenever you do uh, the uh, coloring, first they had this kacha. That means you have this thing where you, you really push. make it free and stable. And the yes. same thing you have in karate, you know, you have your belt. Your belt, yes. But see, that was the center. You know, the center of the energy was always here. So if you have, and from here, you are developing. And this is also with the treatment. Whenever you have a, and also in Ayurveda, you know, any toxins, any defects, how does the body get it off? It has to be brought from here. You bring it to the center. You give the medicines, get it off the system. And eliminate it, yes. yes. So in traditional knowledge, it was all the same. The center was always here. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm curious because, you know, I, um, when I came uh, to South India and visit you and meet the gallery, since I was a martial artist, I always had the interest in the history, what happened and all of that. And I feel I feel confirmed from my own research in Ayodhya and Sri Lanka and in South India. There's a many connecting points between India and, and China. And even in the gallery, when I see their emphasis, their training, there's no doubt there's a lot of things which are very, very similar to Kung Fu, very similar. Mm -hmm. But my question is, I don't know if, if you know or if there is a knowledge, is there any like, um, what you call like uh, verbal tradition in, in gallery about uh, Bodhidharma? Is there, is he known in, in South India? Is, is, is it a name? Is there a yeah, knowledge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, because uh, even now movies have come uh, come about that here. Yeah, so okay. it is a yeah. So he is that he has been to China and he visited uh, Tavalin mm -hmm. and uh, he has been teaching there. So this is the story that goes on here. But and, uh, I know it's a popular story, but I think like uh, what I'm asking is within the tradition, do they have an inside knowledge or mm -hmm. history about that? Do you know about this? Yeah, the history, the thing about the Kalari was, you know, the teachers always gave the knowledge to the best students. Mm. Because, so it was, the pro, they would never record the history. This uh, was verbal. within the tradition. Yeah, verbal tradition. And also the, because when you advance, it was like these techniques should be given only to the best ones. Yes. Yeah. And he shouldn't use it in a bad way. Yes. So this was very much preserved. So what happens then? When you don't find someone really good, then it dies off. It disappears, yes. It's the proper way of it, in yeah. the old traditional way. And this is what has happened with this system because uh, every teacher, well, we had even teachers, someone who, actually two, three teachers working in my place. And they said, and they had many students and they are like, I just know about more than five or six percent of the immense knowledge. Yeah, wow. Because that is how much we have lost. Yes. Yeah, and that is extremely sad because that is what happened with the transformation with people's interest. You know, yes. the in yeah. Yeah, I have brought your effort to conserve this knowledge and bring it out to the world again. I, this is wonderful work you're doing there. I've seen how you help the gallery and, and promote their wisdom and all that. That's really beautiful. But as we're ending, I, I just like, I'm curious now because we talk so much about the gallery and maybe some of the people who get to hear this will have some question about gallery. And I know you are connected in South India to some of the great masters who live there, gallery masters. Yeah. Suppose there is an interest for, amongst the, the, the martial arts community and the, the, the Kung Fu uh, community. It, it, would you, and if they have questions from the traditional masters in, in, in the Indian tradition, would, would that be possible to get an interview with, uh, with, uh, with uh, one of the masters there? Of course, I will introduce you to one of the masters who is popular in Trivandrum, who, who have a kalari there. Mm -hmm. And as you know, like there are many masters, most of them don't speak English. 
that is a problem yes. yeah so uh, what i can do is i can introduce to one person who speaks the english wonderful and uh, it would be nice to hear his version and also they have been doing it in their family and yes. also have a uh, famous training center wonderful and as i like said like every person and every uh, dojo or every <laughs> yes. every kaveri has their own way of training so i will introduce to this person and of course you should speak to them because they are the masters <laughs> wonderful wonderful well thank you very much for that i will uh, i will let the the viewers uh, ask the questions and when we have enough questions we we move on and um, make an interview with that master a very generous of you to make the introduction suppose somebody uh, of the viewers uh, they listen to this and they are interested in in uh, meeting you or getting your treatment i've been in your in your place in kerala and i know you got a new place now but it's a wonderful way to like do the panchakarma and stay preferably three mm -hmm. weeks and you know cleanse your whole body and you know be renewed how can people get in contact with you well i can give you our website as okay. soon as you go in you can have, we have the 360 view of the place as well it's mm -hmm. a nice uh, grounding relaxing place yes you can you can go into it and look into it mm -hmm. and and then as we said like we combine the calorie treatments with the traditional ayurvedic treatments in the best possible way yes. and it is a it is a very nice way of healing people I, really I will, uh, benefit from it yes <laughs> if you send me the link i will link it underneath the video so the people who have the interest they can they can see that so. yeah well thank you very much and it was a great pleasure to 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 hear from you and it's a wonderful story and i really applaud your effort to preserve the warrior knowledge like that's that's very wonderful i'm on the same mission i like it also that the people know that because in my view and experience first of all the 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 the, the, the warrior tradition is a little bit secretive you know they know they keep it within their ranks second of all the people don't know the wealth of knowledge which is hidden there mm -hmm. it's incredible unimaginable knowledge about the human physiology and the energy system and the healing mm -hmm. and people know about ayurveda they know about traditional chinese medicine but they miss the deep deep knowledge which is hidden within the the warrior monks they have such specific mm -hmm. knowledge both about spirituality and about healing so mm -hmm. and of course about fighting also so so I, I really like yeah, the really, really wonderful thing about this because knowledge about the body means you need to really go inside the body yes. it is not like uh, seeing through the x-rays or the ct scans this is what i learned yes. you really have to feel the body and this is so important especially with sports injuries i have mm -hmm. seen people where you know they don't really mm -hmm. get the even after surgeries they still start to get the injuries Yes. and this is where we really have to go into the alignment go into the herbal knowledge because there you get people who can really connect with the body you know yes. it is not just that mechanical way exactly. when you are a sports person you really have to go within yourself and feel your system and exactly. that's what the martial arts always always taught yes you know yes. and that is what we have to tell people yeah you know come inside and really feel yourself Yes, exactly. This is important. Well, with these words, I thank you very much for this interview, and I look thank forward to connecting again. Take thank care. You. Thank you.